Hi, my name is Rachel Bixel, and I will be doing my presentation on CSS transitions, which I find are kind of fun. So to get you excited and pumped to learn more about these, I'll give an example of one. So here we got a basic page, just a header image. But if I put my mouse over the image, a transition occurs. So as you see, it got bigger, and when I remove my mouse, it gets back to its original size. So CSS transition is fun because it brings animation to your coding. All right, so but there's a couple things we need to make sure we have right for a CSS transition to work. First off, you need to declare the CSS property you want to affect. For example, that could be weight, height, font size. You also need to make sure you have the duration of the effect stated. For example, if you don't put anything in the duration, nothing's going to happen because the default value for the duration is always set to zero. So, of course, nothing will happen. So, this is how, when you're writing your CSS transition, how they'll look. These are two ways you can do it. So, this top way has it broken down. So, like I said, you need to have the transition property. And for this example, I chose width. For then the transition duration, we have two seconds. These last two, they're optional. You don't have to have them, but they definitely add. We have the transition timing function and the transition delay. And I'll talk a little bit more about those a little later. And so that is the more spread out way to write it. This way is the syntax way. So definitely, if you're wanting to save time, I would get more in the habit of writing it out this way. But you do need to make sure you have it in the correct order of property, duration, timing function, and then delay. So let's get some coding done. All right, so I've just made a simple thing, simple code right here. I have a div with a class of example, and I've made a 100 by 100 pixel red box. Now, I want to make a transition, and I want to change the width of this box. So to get going on it, we start with transition. And then like I said, the property I want to change is width and the duration, I want it to be two seconds long. Now nothing's going to happen yet because I need to specify my end goal, how big I want it to be. So that's where we go to dot example. And now we do hover. Now what that does is that tells the computer every time I put my mouse over dot example, that's when the transition should occur. So now I just need to specify the end goal here. And like I said, I want the end goal to be 300 pixels. And close that off. And if it works, we should see a transition. There we go. Now what if I want to do two properties at the same time? You can and it's very easy. You just go back to the transition add a comma and for this example i want the height and i want the duration to be the same duration two seconds and i just need to specify the height i want it to be and i'm just going to keep things simple and put it to 300 pixels as well and if i put my mouse over there we go i changed two properties in one transition all right so now i'm going to talk about the other two things that I mentioned earlier that were optional. So that was the timing, transition timing function and transition delay. So transition delay, that one's pretty obvious. That's if you want to delay. So if someone put their mouse over an object, it would, wouldn't happen until one second and then the transition would occur. But let's talk about the transition timing function. So there's a couple different types of these. Pretty much what a transition timing function is, it's how fast and slow the transition actually occurs. For example, we have ease, which it starts slow, it goes fast, and then ends slowly. Linear, it's the same speed throughout. Ease in, it starts slow. Ease out, it ends slow. And ease in out, it has a slow start and end. And then lastly, we have the cubic vizier, and that's where you can manually put in how fast or slow you want to go. So I found a pretty good example on a website that just shows all of them at the same time. So you can see that depending on which one you choose, you'll have a different effect. So I'm going to put my mouse over here, and there you go. You can see they all have a different speed and a different look to it. So you just kind of have to play around and see which one you like best for your code. 
Okay, so let's put our code into action. So let's go back to our red box here. And if you remember our syntax, we have property, duration, and then the transition timing, and then delay. So to keep that syntax, I'll do the transition timing, and I just want to do an ease out. And I want a delay of two seconds, and I'll just add that to my height. And I'll just do the same thing because I want a uniform look for my box. And you don't need to add anything down here because you're not changing the width or the height. So if I put our, my mouse over the box, there should be a two second delay. And it goes. So there you go. Transition's easy. Just remember the syntax and you can have some fun animation in your coding. All right, so I'm just gonna quickly add a third property as well to give you another an example. And I wanna change my red box to a blue box. So all I need to do is come and put that comment there. I need to declare my property I'm wanting to change. That's gonna be background color. My duration, I'm gonna put one second and I'm not gonna do transition timing or delay right now. And then I come in back here and make sure I specify what I want my background color to be changed to. And like I said, I wanna do blue. And if we go in here, it should change pretty fast. There we go, goes right to blue. All right, but I wanna have it be um, in sync with my other transitions, but I don't want to add, the, add a transition timing to the background color. I don't have to, so I can just add two seconds, and that's going to be for my delay. And I don't need to change anything down there. Go over there. It should change blue with the other transition. There we go. So you've got a pretty cool looking transition going on, but there's even more things that we can do. Another thing you can do with transitions are transformations. So that's taking your transition to another level. So here's a couple different transformations that you could do. Um, there's rotate. That's for, of course, you're wanting to rotate your object or picture 90 degrees. You have translate. That's actually moving your objects on an X and Y axis. And we have skew. So if you literally want to skew parts of the X and Y on your object. For example, you can make a square into a parallelogram. Sorry, I said that weird. But so let's try out some of these transformations within our code. All right, let's pull up the red box and we'll go here and let's add in transform. And I want it to be Duration of two seconds, so it's matched up with everything else. I also want it to change with everything else, so I'm going to do two seconds as well. And now I need to go down here and specify what type of transform I'm wanting to occur. So I'm going to do a rotate, and I just want to do 90 degrees. And you write it out like that. Make sure you close it off, and let's see if it worked. There it is. So we did a transition and a transformation at the same time and it has kind of a cool effect going on there. And just real quickly here, if you wanted to do another transformation, just go right here under the hover, the dot example hover, go to the transform part, just do a space and I wanna do a translate. And then I just specify the X and Y, the position I want it to go to. I'm going to do a negative 300 pixel here so you actually can see it on the screen when it occurs. And we'll see what happens there. There you go. So there's just a lot of fun things that you can do with transition and transformation. I, hopefully this is, these will be the basics to get you going to add these to your, your website. I personally would just recommend don't overdo it. If you have too much transitions going on in one website, it will be distracting and take away from the message of your website. But there you go. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me and I will do my best to answer them for you. Thanks for watching.